And we're back with another Pico CTF challenge. This time we're doing vault door training. It's a reverse engineering task for 50 points. And we can see a very long description. Your mission is to enter Dr. Evil's laboratory and retrieve the blueprints behind a series of locked doors. Each door is controlled by a computer and requires a password. Uh, but you got the source code. Okay, all right, that's a lot of backstory. So let's download the source code and let's open it up in VS Code. So I'll get a terminal right here and I'll say, VS Code, open this directory. We'll take a look at the source code. And I would highly recommend that you get something like VS Code set up. We'll talk about how to get it set up later, but uh, it's just gonna make your life a lot easier. So if you wanted to just use Java and, and not use any of the fancy tools I'm gonna show you, you could, and you would compile this using Java C, which is the Java C compiler, and then the name of the Java file that you're interested in compiling. And you would see it spits out a class file. This is this is like a, a compiled down version of the code. If we looked at it, it wouldn't make a lot of sense because it's not really intended for human consumption. But it can be run. And so now if we were to say Java vault door training, we see that we get prompted for a password. It says enter vault password. Please subscribe is what I'll give it. Access denied. Okay, so now let's start looking at what it actually does. And we'll start by reading, but then we'll just, we'll do this dynamically and we'll cheat and I'll show you how nice VS Code is. Uh, so we start in the main, uh, the main method is the way this works. And we start from the top and work our way down. So we declare a new instance of this class. We create a scanner. A scanner is a way of reading input and it's gonna be read from system.in, which is what we saw below. System.in is the command line typically. Then we print, system out print, enter vault password. So we have a prompt and we use the scanner and we get its next input. And, and here's another thing that VS Code makes so nice is we're getting all the descriptions of the different methods that are being called. So if you didn't know, for example, what a scanner is, you could just hover over it and you would be told, here's basically how it's used. And you can see they're using it in the exact same way that we were using it uh, back in this vault door training. They declare a scanner and then they, they get the next int in this case, rather than just next, which gets a string instead. So you can see usage, you can see descriptions. This is really great. Uh, I would highly recommend it. You can work without it, but uh, it's, it's like uh, trying to build a house without saws and screws and things like that. Like it can be done, but it shouldn't be. Okay, so we get our next input, which we call user input. Here we expect the input to be wrapped in Pico CTF and then a curly, and then to end with a curly. So we're eliminating those so that we only work on what's inside. So just to make this a little more clear, if we were to go down here and, sorry about that. If we were interested in passing the flag, we would have to wrap it in Pico CTF curly, uh, the actual value, and then an ending curly. So what this is saying is, I want to throw away the beginning and the very end and get the substring that's in between. And then we take that and put it in this input. And then we run the check password method. And when we go down to the check password method, we can see it's very simple. We take the password and we compare it to this string and we return whether they're the same. If they are the same, we say access granted. If it, it's not, then we take this else path and we say access is denied. So now I'm gonna debug it and we'll run through this quickly. And I know this is slow, but we're going to be gradually getting more and more complicated and I'll explain less and less because you've seen other ones in the series. There's vault door one, vault door two, three, et cetera. Okay, so we create our vault door like I described and you can see it over here, by the way, you can see the variables as they're created. So next you're gonna see a scanner be created over here we could also, we could hover over it and it'll show us all the uh, elements of the scanner. So it's very nice in that regard. We're going to give our prompt. You're gonna see it appear down here in the terminal. And then we're going to ask for user input. And I'm gonna say again, please subscribe. And we can see, yeah, so there are many ways to get the user input. You could, or uh, the, the variables. You could look in this pane here, for example, it's showing the variables. We're also getting it as we go out here which is very nice. So we can see this line is just the declaration of a variable. And so it tells us what that variable ends up being. We can also hover. So there are many ways to inspect what's going on. Input resolves to what we said, be scribe. And then we want to uh, step in. So I've been stepping over, which means it doesn't go into other methods. It will just continue to execute this line and this line and this line and this line. If we were to step into something, you'll see we go down into this other method. Methods are denoted by curlies. And now we're gonna do a comparison of bscribe. And we're gonna ask, is that equal to warming up with Java? And the answer is no, it's not. So we won't go into this true path. So 
if this was true, we would grant access, but it's false, so we say access denied. Okay, so if we wanted this to succeed, this is our flag, I'll, I'll tell you that, this is our flag. To prove it, let's take this value, let's rerun this, we'll, uh, we'll actually, we'll debug, we'll set our breakpoint right here, and we will wrap it, like we discussed it needing to be wrapped, paste in that value we saw below, close it, and press enter. And then we'll step over this because we think it's going to pass. We're not too interested in looking unless it fails at why it passes or succeeds. So we think it's going to go right here and it does. So we have our flag to submit. So let's take that and go back to the challenge and submit it. Hooray, we solved it successfully. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, if you could like, subscribe, or comment, it would help me out a lot. Thanks. Bye.